So kind of back to the idea of uh, virtual machines fitting within the GitOps model and you know, just the fact that they do have kind of lives of their own. There is, there, there are some things that you can change about a VM uh, live, but not very many. And so, you know, obviously we have, we, we check all the boxes except for the last one where uh, we're reconciling. So uh, in the case of the demo that I'm going to run at the end of this, uh, I'm using Argo CD and uh, Kubert by uh, downstream, so right now I'm, I ran my demo with uh, OpenShift, and so it's OpenShift virtualization, OpenShift GitOps, but the reality is both of those products are under the hood, just the, uh, the downstream of a, an upstream community uh, in Kuvert and Argo CD. So the desired state being expressed declaratively is handled by Kuvert, uh, the state being stored is handled by Argo CD, and pulling it automatically from the source, I actually have a, a GitHub repo that I'll share later. Now the thing about the state being continuously reconciled, we have some things that uh, the virtual machine is going to control but not allow you to change while the virtual machine is running. And so there, there is some intent on providing things like memory expansion and uh, you know hot pluggable cores and things like that, but it's just not quite there within Kubernetes in a way that will make it easy to do within uh, Kubevert. And so right now, all of these uh, resources are something that is, are immutable once you create a virtual machine. Uh, you can, actually you can change them, but you can't change them for the running virtual machine. So uh, the one thing that we really can get in and reconcile is the state, uh, which you can have as running or stopped or, or uh, actually several state hints like, you know, run until end and restart if, if failed, and things like that. And so you have this kind of concept like, you know, the rest of the entire section of things that uh, virtual machines do are, you know, under the control of the guest and therefore not touchable by Kubernetes. So what can we do with that bit of the state that we can reconcile? One of the easier expressions right now is uh, stateless virtual machines. And so you get this idea of uh, virtual machines as cattle, kind of in the uh, pets versus cattle mode. And so you can run test platforms, basically anywhere where you're running a virtual machine that uh, you, you run it once, do something, and then kill it afterwards, and you don't care what happens to the, uh, the data on the virtual machine afterwards. And so one possible example of that is virtual desktops. You can run a farm of virtual desktops using a Kubernetes cluster and then basically by, you know, kind of borrowing your authentication and your uh, disk space from some other network service, you can run those uh, pretty nicely ephemerally. Uh, another great example is Killer Coda. Killer Coda is a group that took over after Catacoda uh, from O'Reilly shut down and they allow you to do uh, quick uh, deployments of virtual machines that either run like Ubuntu images or even small uh, Kubernetes clusters. And they're essentially just uh, quick disposable VMs for teaching scenarios. So you get to, to run a Catacoda scenario for about an hour and then the VMs go away. And the cool thing we learned when we went to uh, try to port from Catacoda to Killer Coda is that Killer Coda actually runs on Kubevert. So we had a great synergy there. So the, the other side of that though, and, and the subject of the talk is when we're talking about legacy applications. And so for a, a legacy VM, this is something that is uh, not stateless. You're, you're going to have some state between runs. Uh, you may have internal configuration management, like through Puppet or Ansible or something like that, that maintains the state of the virtual machine, uh, separate from what's going on in the kube cluster. And um, as I'm hoping with the thrust of this talk, we hope that these would be a good uh, target for modernization. So, which is one of the reasons that you would want to bring one of these VMs into a Kubernetes cluster. And so this is the the kind of flow chart of what I would like to demonstrate real quickly. So with this, over here on the left, we have a legacy virtual machine and it's running four services. 
And in interest of full disclosure, I completely cribbed this example from the Istio project. This is their, you know, how to do a service mesh in Kubernetes uh, project. And they start with microservice deployments. And so I went backwards to get a nice demo. <laughs> And so I'm going to be working backwards for the for the rest of the uh, presentation. And uh, so starting off with a virtual machine that is running all these services, uh, you can put it into the Kubernetes cluster, and you can. And I'm realizing that I am starting to overload things. So it's it's running VM services on the virtual machine, and uh, you have Kube service Kube ver, uh, sorry Kubernetes services pointing at different aspects of the virtual machine. One of the nice things about running a virtual machine as a pod, in a pod is that you can treat it as any other pod. You can point services at TCP ports, and it doesn't care that underneath the external face of the pod is an actual virtual machine running. It just goes through as just as if it were a, uh, a regular pod running whatever container you might have. And so starting off with uh, the virtual machine, we then decide that we're going to have a project to modernize the product page, which means that we spin up a deployment, and once that deployment is looking good, or you know, in a kind of a AB or canary testing scenario, something that Argo CD is very good at helping with, you can test that uh, deployment against uh, how the, uh, the virtual machine was running, and when it's ready to take over, you just simply point your services around. And the same works for the other microservices in order as you go. And so in the case of the, the details service, you just need the, uh, or you basically set up the details deployment and point the details service at it. And then it gets a little more interesting when you have the uh, product page pointing at reviews and then pointing back at, uh, at the reviews uh, deployment. And finally, we have a oops, rating service. And once you've gotten to this point, you notice that there's nothing pointing at the actual virtual machine anymore, so we just go ahead and turn it off. And so, real quickly. And as I mentioned before, this demonstration's uh, actually in OpenShift. And so in, in here, you're looking at the developer view of OpenShift virtualization uh, with uh, one virtual machine there in the middle. And so we have our Argo CD panel. And so everything represented here is as it was in the first slide, where you have the virtual machine, a stack of services pointing at it. You can see everything is up and running. And here's the front face of the actual application itself. So I'll point out a couple of things on, on this because as you modernize, sometimes you also want to you know, add features. And so right now, the title of this one is Book Info Legacy. You can see here in the very light gray text in the black bar. We have uh, star ratings for, for this book. They're, they're all in black. And right now, we have just kind of a generic publisher name, Publisher A. And I'm pointing those out because, of course, I'm going to be changing those. And so here's the the Git repository. I'll just kind of go through and look at the two tags that I have. And so I am I was running through this demo and uh, essentially I had all the code in the repository and just in order to record the demonstration, I just ran back in time. So when we get to this screen, Actually, we'll take a look at the, the commit log here. We'll see that we're, we're just going to go back in time and set the, the tag that points to dev to uh, this initial commit with the legacy virtual machine. And there's a little bit of uh, force pushing just to make the demonstration work. And 
And of course, the uh, Argo CD application is pointing at that dev tag. So I'm going in and I'm just doing a refresh, and then the rest of it's hands off. There's auto sync going on. And uh, also, let's see. And there you can see that the deployment popped up for the product page. And now you can see, as soon as we get a refresh, the name of the page has changed. Now you're, you're working from the microservice. But this part, this part over here with the, the details and the stars, all those are still on the VM. So kind of as the, the slides that I had right before the demo go, the rest of the demonstration is basically, you know, rinse and repeat. So we're going through showing that we refresh, pop up a new deployment. Check the page. And now Publishers changed to Courier Corporation because the microservice that I'm using actually goes out to, I think it's Google's API to search for the real book, and so it finds one. And the last interesting one, or the, there's two more deployments left to go, but last kind of interesting one that has a big effect is the, uh, the one that changes the reviews service. And so that pops up and we'll see that the stars change color. And we, we have a reviews served by now as a, a container reference. And I'll just kind of muddle ahead a little bit because the ratings is just more of the same. It didn't actually change the output too much. I did want to get to that one. <laughs> okay. So the last part of this is a, uh, a simple one-line change that changes the, the VM state from running to stopped. Um, it's, it's a single line change in the YAML. And so with this, we do a, a quick refresh just to show, yes, the page is still up and running, all, all the services are still up and running, but the VM is actually stopped. And that concludes the demo portion. I have any questions? And I'll put up some, some links here. Oh, and uh, Kubert and ArcoProj, for that matter, are both in the, um, was it the partner pavilion off to the side of the, yeah. the major group? Yeah, so come visit us. There's T-shirts to be had at the Kubert booth, at least, I can speak for. Hey, <laughs> I had a very, like, I felt like it was a really boring demo because it just all worked. And there wasn't anything exciting, but I, I like it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you all. Thank you.